Hey, I'm Joe Connolly. I love today's story for two reasons. There are two very unusual aspects about it. One is that I'm here with Bob and Tom and their score advisor, Tom, and Bob and Tom bought the company they worked for, which is very rare. Even more rare is that they then reinvented a 100-year-old company and have it growing at a rate of about 25% a year again, I believe. A 100-year-old company. Bob, first of all, what, what is the big change that you guys made once you became the owners? Well, we always looked and said, you know, if I was the owner, I would do things differently. <laughs> and not too many people get that opportunity, and Tom and I did. And we went back to the basics and said, hey, a handshake is a handshake. That's the way my dad raised me. That's the way, you know, Tom was raised. And we're going to do that with our customers. We really focused on delivering the right products to the right kind of customer. We also understand the new regulations in food safety and consider our responsibility to take care of the food safety for our customers. And that is a full-time job, too. Wow, so that's a real new value added. Tom, does that mean to say that the first thing that you new owners did was go around and meet all of the existing clients? Or what, what was the first thing you guys did? We went around meeting some of the clients. Right. Reevaluated what we needed to do. Right. Uh, hiring practices. Right. You know, get it all together. Did you did you gradually take over though, or did you just buy it one day and you were the owners? Uh, were you brought up to take it over? We were quite entrenched when we took it over. Because you'd worked there for a long right. time. Bob had known the office and what the office does, and I take care of the operations. I guess what I'm asking is, um, <clears throat> did the Former owners stay on for a little while yes. to m help you yeah, take the, it over. The uh, Valenti family understood that, you know, we were becoming their stewards of their name right. and their family. And we took over, having worked for them for, I was a 20-year employee, Tom was a 40-year employee. Tom was actually the first non-family hire <laughs> to the company. Wow. We, had, uh, we had known the customer, so we didn't have to actually go around and see everybody. We did go out and visit some. We other ones we called. And you know what? We just said, hey, listen, we're here to bring the company next generation, make it even better. It was a great company, okay? But let's make us ready for the next century. Did you suggest that you buy the company, or did the Valenti family come to you? We approached them. You did? Yeah. So were you planning this for a long time, or did it just hit you? No, it just circumstances led to that. Wow. And say, hey, there's an opportunity here. I went to Bob and said, I think we can make something work here. And we sat down, made a formula, kind of, and went forward and made a proposal to them. What advice, this is so rare to do what you guys have done, what advice do you have to somebody who may be in a similar situation, they've worked for 10 or 20 years at a business, and they may want to buy it? What, what advice do you have for those who want to do what you've well, done? Well, make sure that you, you really know what you're doing and that you can do it. And if that's been your dream or whatever it is, you go for it. Fine. Don't let anything stand in your way. Tom is uh, your SCORE uh, advisor. And anyone who listens to me on the radio knows that whenever I can, I always recommend SCORE as a place for great free business advice. So I've said that. Tom, when you came in, did you know this was going to work? What was your first assessment of this situation and your first impression of what they might be able to do? We were very interested in the viability of the name and the company and the fact that they were rebuilding a, a many year old company however in our very first meeting we said to these gentlemen we've got to make some changes to bring you into the current environment in terms of marketing and sales internet digital marketing and that really was our initial focus bring you into the new century and i i believe in day one one of the things we said to them is you got to hire a director of marketing and sales that was probably the very first thing we said to them. Wow. And so you met your drill instructor. <laughs> exactly. Did, did we? <laughs> and strategically, Tom has been great along with the whole team. And what did we do? We hired that director of sales and marketing. Okay. That was hired while uh, Dominic Valente was still part of the organization. And it helped transition. I had been an active in the sales role of releasing some of my responsibilities 
to the director of sales and allowing me to take the, the role of CEO, president, and run the company. Wow. How long a period did this transition take? A year or two? Oh, about two years, yeah. And, um, Tom, what did you do before you became a SCORE counselor? What industry were you an executive in? I spent uh, 40 years in the consulting business, marketing, sales, promotion, market research, consulting, in my own company twice and worked for two other companies. Wow. And prior to that, I was at Procter & Gamble in the marketing world. But what's interesting is that in the very first meeting, you said, this is wonderful, we can support you, but look, there, there are some big changes that we're going to recommend here. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And did you say you hired a sales and marketing person, or are that two different people? That is one person, because, again, we are a smaller size company. How many employees today? About 30. Mid I call it mid-size, yeah, so yeah, but it's still technically mid-size. small, right? So um, you need somebody really to take care of the real focus on sales, right? And it's not just sales. It's about delivering on our promises, right? right. Um, we have a tagline is where we kind of say like a mission, and it's delivering success one ingredient at a time. We believe that a baker buying ingredients needs to have a good formula, needs to have the right ingredients delivered, need to have the right um, people on their staff as well as people to consult from the outside. Right. So we actually help bakers with formulas and, and whatnot when they're trying to develop new recipes. I myself am an experienced baker. I've had, I have salespeople that are expi- uh, experienced chefs. So we have a team that actually help our customers succeed. When you say Valenti yeast, uh, does that mean you deliver dough? Or you, wh- wh- Tell me what that means. What? So we keep the legacy name. 1909 right. Italian immigrant Domenico Valente sold yeast on a horse and buggy. <laughs> on a lower east side. Classic from, story. From right. now... From there to now, we have 1,400 different individual ingredients that are used for baking and cooking. So from our studio today, you go across the street, that happens to be a customer. You have eaten product from our warehouse. But besides baking, we also do food products. So yeah, a Meals on Wheels manufacturer would be our customer. An airline caterer would be our customer. Jails are our customer. What do you deliver them? Do you deliver them the, you don't deliver them the finished product. You don't deliver them bread and cupcakes, right? So the majority... Sorry, asking dumb questions. Just the so majority of products are basic ingredients. Right. Okay? So um, flour, sugar, oils, okay? And we also understand that in today's market, people are concerned for health, and we're really focused in on the all-natural, organic kind of items. Might some people say that these ingredients are commodities? Yes. So how do you handle that sales objection? You watch the market see what's going on, try to buy right, right. We are and bring also, the value to the customer. That gets so little attention in business discussions, buying right. I've had uh, people tell me that that was their main secret to success. Uh, a guy was in the fashion business. He said, I had to go to work every single day ready to buy thousands of yards. Most days I didn't, but I had to be mm-hmm. ready to. Right. We also are fortunate to be part of a buying group. The buying group is called DDA, Dawn Distributors Advantage, and we have billions of dollars of buying power. Billions. Have you, um, Tom, um, done any other consulting on modernizing older existing businesses, or is this your main one here? No. Personally, I mean, I've worked with over 1,000 SCORE clients, and prior to that, probably close to a thousand other clients in my other business and we've we've run into it I mean I started after I left Procter Gamble I was with Arm and Hammer and introduced all I had was the baking soda I introduced the laundry detergent into the United States <laughs> and the Arm and Hammer story speaks for itself Just don't mix the laundry detergent with the yeast Just be careful <laughs> of that. but see though how things tie together I mean you had a related experience. We always find this, that it's almost like karma. Things come together, fortunately, often. Um, where do you go from here? Now what? what? Just sell more of same, sell more differently? What? What are your plans for expansion and growth? So we've done a good, team, a good situation by creating the team. Hiring the sales and marketing director right. allowed us now to build a team uh, of salespeople underneath them 
and I use the word salespeople, but they're really consultants. Okay, they are experienced in the industry, able to help help the customers. Right. Uh, we are going to continue to do what we do, and what we do is distribute locally high quality ingredients with the utmost of food safety for our area. You have said, I haven't written them all down, but you've used about a dozen very effective uh, words. Local, ingredients, effective, safe. Um, these are all powerful marketing, marketing words uh, that don't, aren't normally used, it seems to me. Correct. But that's what working with SCORE helps us understand what our bottom line um, business, core business is about. Okay. It's not about the yeast only. No, it's not. No, not it is about delivering success one ingredient to our at a time. It is helping our customers succeed, knowing what we do right. We've said we want to be everything to somebody, not something to everybody. We understand the customer that wants our product, what needs it, and geographically we just go a little further, but we're going to stay local. How many people in New York City, how many people eat grains in New York City? There's enough to keep Tom and I busy for the next 50 years. 